Let's take a look at a PDP-8 on an FPGA based on Tom Almey's book. Here's a look at the front panel for the card. It's got all the usual switches of a smaller PDP-8 front panel. Here's the FPGA card. It's a QM Tech card. Runs about $20 shipped from China. A little bit extra for shipping actually. And it's a Cyclone 4. EP4 CE15, which has more than enough resources to do this function. The baseboard below the FPGA card has uh, connectors for VGA, a USB to serial interface, and a PS2 connector. Uh, the SD card slot and the SRAM on it aren't used. They can be used for other retro computer designs, but aren't necessary for this particular project. The bare board is available from Tindy from the Landboard store. We'll put a link below in the show notes. The main function here is the connection down of the two 64 pin connectors from the FPGA card and then a connection to a 50 pin I.O. connector on the left side. The VGA display is also used in this particular application, although it isn't necessarily needed. You could use just the serial port, so the USB to serial is necessary. Here's the two cards mounted together with 632 standoffs. There's a 50 pin cable that goes between the two cards. It's a one to one pin out. Not all the pins are used on the front panel card and they're connected to power and ground, which leaves some free pins on the uh, baseboard as well as power pins out of the PDP-8 front panel for connecting up other functional things that you might want to connect up, maybe an RS-232 port. Here's a very poor quality video of the connection of the two cards together. The connector on the left is the VGA connector and the center connector there is USB to serial connector. Here's the operation of the card. The display button cycles between the four display options, either the accumulator, memory, memory quotient, or the PC. And you can see them change when you press the various buttons. Uh, slide switches are on the bottom for selecting things and push buttons for loading the accumulator, depositing in memory, loading the PC, stepping and switching between display options are shown. There's also a run light and a couple other lights on as well. Here's the card running the sieve of Erosthenes, printing all the prime numbers from 1 to 4093 and the card can be restarted and then reset in the middle of running by pressing the reset button and that's what's shown here and then it can be left alone to complete as well the FPGA code is compiled under Cordis 2 and here's the top level PDPA entity it consists of the front panel connections the serial port connection the display for the VDU and the PS2 keyboard which is currently not set up and running. The VDU code is lifted out of the multi-comp code. It's an ANSI terminal and it's pretty much unadapted and just runs straight out with the PS2 ignored. The CPU is uh, fairly minimal. It just has all the components that are in it. The main part of the CPU design is the state machine and that's a fairly complicated design. Tom's book does a decent job of covering the state machine. It just has a lot of state bits and a lot of control functions. And it runs in sort of different timing depending upon what function is being performed. The next section is the I.O. controller. And he implements uh, ports 3 and 4, which are uh, teletype interface, basically, or console interface. And that's only, it's only hooking up the three and four here, although some other addresses are shown in the table up there of what it could be expanded to. But basically, like I said, just using three and four addresses. The next module is the memory. And this is important because if you wanna change the program, you have to go in and select the internal memory and then put in the address for the location for the MIF file that you want to load. Basically loads the program into ROM when it starts running. The next section is the front panel and this is what connects up the front panel LEDs, switches and push buttons to the device 
and drives the internal FPGA CPU core uh, by translating those out. The final selection of the device is the ports 3 and 4 which go to the UART as ins and outs. You can take a look at the project up on our Hackaday project page for the project on hackaday.io and we show some of the details there, the various pictures of the card and this is Tom's book, the PDP-8 class project, project resolving an old machine. A very good book and well worth buying. It's a pretty inexpensive, uh, three bucks on Kindle or seven bucks on paperback and definitely well worth reading. Tom definitely deserves the support for doing this project. It's a neat project. The feature set is that it uses the Altair EP4 CE15 FPGA has 4K of 12-bit words in it, uh, UART with USB to serial on the card, and the control front panel connections. Tom's book has the source assembler, and we had to write a bin to MIF file converter. We wrote it in Python, and that allows the program to be stored in the RAM on the FPGA. The front panel is described in a little more detail on the wiki page. I used orange LEDs to match the PDP-80. Some machines use red, but I think the orange gives a more old school feel. I like it. There's a little more details on the front panel features and the buttons and what they do when you press them and what you should see on the displays. Here's a real authentic PDP-80 front panel and what it looks like. It's got quite a few of the very similar functions and lights and switches. The design is definitely not a resource hog, it has quite a bit of room left. In fact, it can be run on the original EP2 Multicomp compatible if you've got one of those sitting around. It just doesn't have enough I.O. for the front panel. The project logs on the Hackaday describe the bin to mif.py program that I wrote, a Python program to create the memory initialization file for the Altera so the program can be run out of ROM. For more details, check out the Hackaday page and check out the wiki page for the front panel as well. And uh, there's also a GitHub for the FPGA code itself and it's all linked together. I think I'm going to be selling the PDP-8 front panel card on Tindy in the near future. If you want more information, you can see our wiki pages for these products and we have YouTube videos on them as well. We have a store in Tindy where we sell all of our cards. Thanks for watching our video and if you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.